Hello, wrestling fans, and welcome to another edition of NBC's Town Count. I'm Steve Fall. On today's episode, though, we're going to get a little dark because I got evil Una with me from AEW, The Dark Order. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Steve? I am doing super, and I am just so happy to have you here. Thank you. I also, I also have my luchador mask behind me. I got on my honeymoon, uh, of course, La Parca, but you, where did, yes. that, where did that mask idea come from? Uh, I started wrestling when I was a teenager, and so I started wearing a mask uh, to kind of mask the fact that I was younger than everyone I wrestled. Uh, and then over time, uh, as as my wrestling progressed, uh, I started leaning towards uh, you know darker stuff. So like evil, it's straight in the name. But uh, uh, for this design and every design, I just leave it open to my mask maker, who is an artist. He does a uh, his uh, individual pieces of art every single one of my masks and so he kind of gets to decide what i look like every single week he gets to decide what my next face to face is my next three faces are wow um it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a decent life being hidden from everyone at all times I will of say. course because you can go walk around the the streets and go to the grocery store wherever mm-hmm. you want to go really and no, no one's gonna no be one ever jumping on top me. of you that's right. No one ever bothers me when I'm trying to buy cheese at the grocery store. <laughs> or walk to the airport. You know, you see so many stories online of uh, professional wrestlers sending out tweets being like, can you stop harassing me mm. at four in the morning? And obviously you are uh, lucky enough to have your face covered so that, that doesn't happen to you. It is. Qu- it does happen to me sometimes, but it is quite rare. Uh, um, you know, I, I might be bombarded when I am wearing just my surgical mask every now and then. But uh I do not get it like a John Moxley would, for example. Of like I, I don't, I don't have a whole crowd of people waiting for me. First of all, they don't know what I look like, so it, that is definitely to my advantage. I get to sneak in, sneak out. I get, I get the best of both both worlds. I get to be on television, but I also get to do pretty much anything I want without anyone really knowing who I am. So it's, it's very good. That's perfect. Now, how did you get into wrestling? A friend, a family member, channel surfing. Uh, so I started watching uh, wrestling when I was a kid. My mom uh, and I would watch it as I, I was uh, like, I think the earliest memory I have of it is like three or four years old. And we watched it pretty continuously. And then uh, in my early teen years or going into my teen years, um, she took wrestling away from me because, you know, the attitude era at that time uh, was, was a little too risque for like a, a 12, 13 year old, yeah. uh, which made me want to watch it more. Uh, at, at that time so i would sneak uh i would sneak out uh at night and wait till everyone was asleep and i would watch the tsn replay of raw at midnight you know it would play at it would play at 9 a.m or 9 p.m till 11 by 11 my mom would go to sleep and then at at midnight i would wake up and i would watch everything on the first dial of audio <laughs> and uh from there um i always imagined i was gonna be a wrestler someday um and it is quite rare you you become a wrestler and so people would always make fun of it because there was no way of potentially being a, a wrestler but i had a uh, school magically opened up uh in my my area i'm from uh, the ottawa area in canada uh, and opened up when i was 14 and i joined uh i joined two weeks after finding out with a friend and i haven't looked back since wow i i I do. Rec- I think it's funny because the attitude era, everyone always some um, brings that up. And I grew up in that era, too. And it's mm. funny because I don't know if my parents ever walked in when, and was like, what are you watching? Oh, Sable. Oh, yeah. oh see, yeah. Boston. Oh, they would buy me a DX shirt that said suck it on the front of it. <laughs> and I don't true. think they thought of it. They were like, oh, you like this thing? Here you mm. go. We want as a parent for you to like us. So we're going to buy you what you want. Uh, for my, my mom watched it with me. So she got to see it firsthand pretty often and so you know after a couple of weeks you you can let it go but after months and months of the same kind of of stuff that i shouldn't have been exposed to when i was so young yeah um she decided to to cut it off but honestly that's kind of what fed my my passion for it because if you take away something you love you're always going to want to try to get back to it and of course it's uh i i honestly don't know anything else in my life that i've loved as much other than pro wrestling since i was a kid uh, uh other than video games which is the, my other facet of my life. And, uh, and that's all because of my mom. So wow. thankful for her because uh, it's been, it's going on 20 years now. So, well, thank you, yeah. evil Uno's mom. Now, <laughs> <laughs> recently though, um, the man you started the dark order with in AEW, Stu Grayson, mm-hmm. his contract expired. He's no longer there with you. Now, what does it feel like to be kind of walking around backstage and, and just not seeing your friend anymore? Uh, it's a little weird. I mean, uh, I, I won't lie and say I, I didn't, uh, you know, I, he's my friend. So I have an understanding of what 
he was going through. It's not like it took me by surprise. Mm. Uh, this was like a mutual decision. Um, you know, they, they, he, he wanted something out of his contract and they, they did not have that for him. And he wasn't going to continue if it wasn't for that. And he was fine walking away and he's not upset in any way. Uh, I still see him. So we run a wrestling school back in Canada and we spend, we still see each other once or twice a week. Mm. Uh, we're still great friends, but it is very, very weird because I, I've navigated most of my wrestling career with him by my side. Uh, and now I'm kind of, uh, you know, I'm kind of doing it on my own again. There was a short period of time I did it uh, in the 2010s where we weren't a team anymore. Um, and so it's, it's going back to that, but now it's on now national television, which is a, a lot harder. You know, it's a lot easier to have, an anchor point and someone that you know who to uh, how to work with uh, uh who who completely understands both your rhythm in wrestling but your your personality and, and who you are as a person uh to help you navigate the backstage uh but uh i, I i'm pretty confident i'll do okay and i'm sure Stu, wherever he does land will do fantastic as well because he's truthfully one of the best wrestlers probably in the world and i think most people just are unaware of it well, we, we've seen it with many different people over time where they, they leave one spot, go to another, and then return mm-hmm. back to just see, oh, well, they left, they learned a new hold mm-hmm. and return, and suddenly they're on top of the world. So it's nothing we haven't seen before in the past with a million wrestlers. Exactly. So it's, it's you know, of course, it is strange to see a coworker and your friend of yours no longer there every day. Mm-hmm. So, but anyways, um, it's 2019 double or nothing pay-per-view you made your debut with him Correct. you came out and you had uh, all those other members of the dark order we didn't know at the time and i i absolutely love that moment it was so it was so great but this coming in may may 29th double or nothing returns to nevada t-mobile arena Correct. and currently you're not on the card but let's talk about that in a second though mm-hmm. hangman page a good friend of the dark order is taking yeah. on cm punk defending his championship i think i know your answer well, what's your prediction for that matchup? Oh, I, I, I'm in the camp hangman for sure. A hundred percent. I think, and th- this is not even because we're, we're close friends and this is uh, not a slight to punk in any way, but I don't think there is a better wrestler on our TV show than hangman Adam page. Um, we've seen Jericho with the championship. We've seen Omega with the championship. We've seen hangman with the championship and, and they have all been fantastic, but I think uh, hangman has proven in the quality of his title defenses uh, that he is, he is one of the best wrestlers ever. He's having an incredible run. I don't think he's had a bad match in years. Um, And honestly, he's just, I believe the better wrestler between him and CM Punk. And I think he's going to walk out the champion. I hope so. You know, the, you never know what could happen. This is the, this, the world of wrestling, anything could happen at any time. But I, I, if I were to make a bold prediction, I would say he, he walks out champion for sure. All right. And I think even Tony Khan recently did an interview saying that Hangman Page is the, uh, I guess, the greatest AEW champion Mm -hmm. so far. And there was a lot of contention online, you know, because you just mentioned all the the past champions, Jericho, you know, Mega, Moxley. So really, you're obviously in the camp of you believe what Tony said is Hangman Page is so far in the history of AEW, the greatest champion. I definitely do, because uh, look at the variety of matches he's had. He's had, uh, you know, he's had short uh, high flying sprints with uh, Dante Martin. He's had one hour classics with uh, Brian Danielson. He's yeah. had death matches with both uh, uh, Lance and uh, Adam Cole. And then he had a fantastic pro wrestling match, just a, a, a you know, pure pro wrestling match with Adam Cole as well. So he, he's proven that he could do practically every style and he's fantastic on the mic as well. Uh, he is one of the the nicest men and most approachable men out there, and also one of the most relatable, you know. Um, so I, I truly think, uh, uh, as far as champion, he has proven his worth, and I hope he continues to be champion after this. I hope this is uh, this is only the start of his story. I hope you did bring up his diversity because that last year mm-hmm. it was uh, Hangman and Kenny Omega versus the Young Bucks, and People still talk about it. It won awards. Yes, for the one of the match. Uh, greatest tag matches of all time. Yes, yeah. And uh, I, you know, I've been watching the WWE since I was eight years old, and I, mm. I'm not going to sit here and, and ever say disparaging words against a great match. Doesn't matter where it is, it's a great match. Mm. And that was one of the best tag team matches I've ever seen in my life. And obviously, you said you've been in the business for 20 years, and you're also saying it is. So yes, I and I, I truthfully do agree. Um, I mean, I think the quality of wrestling is only improving over time. Uh, when I started wrestling, uh, just as a sidebar, but 
um, the level of wrestling as far as like the the average wrestler was far inferior than nowadays. We we have we have seventeen year olds now who wrestle who are as good as people who are fifteen years in, and that's just I think because the previous generations have taught this new generation and we're a lot more giving than previous generations. So I, I think for now, this is one of the greatest tag matches of all time, but it could, ge- it could genuinely be eclipsed within weeks from now. I think the landscape wow. of wrestling is so quick uh, and evolving at all times. And there, there's always new talent and talent are getting better. And they're always trying to one up each other that what is good last year will always be good. We can always go back. There, there are some AGP, AGPW tags from the 80s and from like 2004 and onwards that I, I will watch all the time. An old Toriumon, an old uh, WWF, and old WCW. But it, it, even though it's one of the greatest tag matches I've personally seen, I'm sure it will be eclipsed soon enough because we have such great, amazing talent. You've got Dante Martin. You've got Nick Waynes. You've got uh, Lee Moriarty's. You've got... Uh, Wheeler Yuta. That's not even a tag division, but I'm just saying. Yeah, it is. It is one of the greatest tag matches, and the, it, it shows the prowess of Adam Cole to be able to do. Uh, sorry, Adam Page to be able to do it also in tag and in singles. But I will. I think truthfully, it will be Eclipse eventually. Wow! Wow! That's yeah. a bold claim, but I'm. It's a bold claim indeed. Now uh, I brought up that you know currently you're not on the Double or Nothing mm-hmm. card, and again you made your debut there in 2019. How you how do you feel about your position right now in AEW versus when you first showed up? Uh we are. It's a it's a tough question because when we started we were completely unknown. Uh, so a Double or Nothing, we showed up and we were met with "Who are you?" chance, which completely at the time was justifiable. We, we had been in Canada for about eight years and no one knew who he was, uh, who we, who either of us was because we had changed names and we had changed mm-hmm. characters, but that kind of was the goal was to come in and, and be a mystery and then develop that mystery over time. Now we're established characters and, but we are so vastly different than what we were three years ago. Um, I could have never predicted my course in AW. Uh, there are so many things that have, 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 you know, change the path that what I thought was going to do. Um, I'm happy in the position I am in, definitely. We have a much larger roster than when we started. Uh, we have, um, if you're going to talk about the top 10 wrestlers of all time, we have way more of them now than we did before. Mm. Uh, you know, we've got Brian Danielson, we've got Moxley, William Regal is here. Uh, we have a New Japan uh, uh, collaboration. We still have Kenny Omega, we got Hangman, we got CM Punk. Um, so I'm ju- I am not upset if I do not make this uh, pay per view card. There is always other pay per view cards, um, but uh, I, I would lie if I would tell you I don't want more. Uh, right. I think I think every pro wrestler should want, uh, you know, every pro wrestler should try to be champion. Every pro wrestler should aim for more than what they have currently. But I am not uh, I'm not the type who uh, who who holds on to negativity. So I'm very happy with where I'm at and I'm very happy where the dark order is at. We are very beloved right now. I feel like we are practically the heart and soul of this, this company at this time. Um, but you know, would I be happier if I was on this card? Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit, but I am not upset if I'm not. Of course. Uh, you know, I, again, I've asked that question to other wrestlers and def- different organizations, and they've mm-hmm. said the same thing. Like, I'm not upset, but would I like to be on the card? Yes, absolutely. Well, yes, absolutely. of course. Um, now, you and the Dark Order are all over being the, the elite. Mm-hmm. Now, do you have a favorite moment when you were on that program? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, I feel like our best stuff was when Mr. Brody Lee was there, for sure. Yeah. Uh, we had such a great dynamic, just like all of us. We were all underlings, but we all kind of had our different personalities and they were all kind of uh, uh, based around how we would interact with Brody. So um, all of the times that we've done content with Brody for BT was hilarious. It was honestly some of the, uh, the, the fun, the most fun we, we've had in pro wrestling as far as me, Stu. Uh, I can't speak for Alex and John, but I do know they, they, they speak very highly of it as well. Um, but uh, if I had one personal favorite and this one, I always remember, but it's uh, the night that, uh, um, Mr. Brody won the TNT championship from Cody Rhodes and we had gone on a tear and we destroyed the entire nightmare family. And then on BTE, we had like a big party celebration with Chili's. Um, and 
everyone laughs at that but like that was a genuine moment for us like uh yeah. mr Burley had had i mean he genuinely he genuinely won a championship so he was extremely happy we uh we had just found out that alex and john were getting signed so so we were so ecstatic for them as well we were finally kind of on cloud nine uh and so we genuinely did order chilies to 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 celebrate and and made a bit out of it um and then honestly every bte uh including that one was is on the cuff we we don't really discuss what we're going to talk we might have a through line if there's yeah. a story we want to get to but it's just it's just friends riffing off each other and you know n- none of them were more fun than when brody was there i i'll never forget just being you guys being slapped in the head with those stacks of paper yeah <laughs> that was so hilarious to me especially during the time it was like the height of the pandemic there was nothing mm-hmm. really in the world to grab onto for positive energy and you watch this program and brody leads are smashing you guys with oh. a stack of paper uh, he, then, would, he would kill someone us someone yelled about like you didn't yeah. sell the paper yeah he would definitely kill us with it I, I we did it initially to establish my role compared to his where I was demeaning to everyone, but I was terrified of Brody. So like he would welp me with stuff and I would just be, get up and be a yes man. But we didn't realize, like first we thought it would be funny if I fell over by being hit by paper, but it literally felt like you were throwing a baseball at your face. Wow. Like he, yeah, he had a heck of an arm. And, and also we, we, it would be a stack of like 40 pages. So it was thick enough that it would hurt. Uh, we never thought it was going to become a thing. We thought it would just be this one time, but people loved it so much that we we kept bringing it back. And eventually it made it to television as well, uh, which is, that's the barometer for us if what we are doing on BT uh, is doing well, is that if if what we are doing on a, a YouTube show in front of 100,000 people for laughs somehow gets moved over to uh, main television in front of a million people, then you know what you were doing is, is, is the right thing. And that is in fact, uh, what people want to see, but you know, it's that BT, what's so good about it is that, uh, it's, uh, an experimental YouTube show. You could try all kinds of things. It might not always work, but it is very rewarding when you find the one thing, uh, and it moves to TV for sure. Yeah. It reminds me of just being my friends, you know, goofing around, having a good time, but you guys mm. are doing it. And, and again, you bring what's working there onto tv now yes. but earlier you mentioned you're huge into video games so let's start a wrestling video game war discussion okay. shall we now we're gonna go back because there's been so many video games but let's go back to you know the heart of nintendo 64 and everyone obsessed greatest wcw or wwf e video game now i have the the list of the main four that everyone always pines over we have no yep. mercy yep WrestleMania 2000 mm-hmm. wcw versus nwo world tour and WCW NWO Revenge. People go crazy over this question, so you're the expert. So please mm-hmm. tell me, out of those four, which one is the best? Uh, so I, I tell you the order I would go in as well. Yeah, this is that. This might get me all the. the hate. Um, <laughs> Let's I, see. Uh, it. I, if we were going to include same engine and also unrelated to WCW WWE, I would put Virt- Virtual Pro Two above all of them. Okay. But if we're talking just those four. Uh, no Mercy 64 would be my number one. It is, other than Virtual Pro Wrestling 2, the game I've spent most time in my life, lifetime, really, honestly, playing it. Um, I was really into World Tour uh, a whole lot, and I would put that as second. Even though I think Revenge came out afterwards and would mm. theoretically be the slightly better game, um, I found World Tour's engine never had that slowdown that, had, uh, that was an issue in No Mercy and Revenge. Mm. Uh, so I preferred World Tour. Uh, it's also just a generation, I think, of WCW I preferred. Then I would go Revenge, and then I would go WrestleMania 2000. Wow. That's me. That's me. But uh, I, I think I think a claim can be made for for at least some of them. I don't. I've never I've never loved 2000 over the other ones. That's the only one that I've never understood the the, the appeal of compared to the other two, uh, the other three. But uh, yeah, No Mercy yeah. 64 is my call for sure. I think it's the the nostalgia of it all, but um, obviously No Mercy had the ladder matches, and that was That's like, right. wait a minute, you can yeah. climb ladders in a video game, what and you could this? stack you could stack them onto the the the. You could also do tag moves. You could do dives with tag moves. I yeah. I would regularly do this with my friends. We would put people in doomsday devices, and you would do a dive from inside the ring onto the doomsday device, so that it ends up being a tag move. Or for example, 
you put the ladder on top of the announcer's table. So oh, you can yeah. Higher. All that stuff. Very, very fun. No Mercy, very, very fun. And, and the great part of it is that you play it today, that engine still works. It's still, still very, very fun. Um, True. It's, it's arcadey, but also it's a it's good middle ground where there is some some levels to the moves. You can't hit a finisher in the first move. You still have to start low, medium, strong, and then get to it. But it is not like a simulation game like the 2K games are at this point with stamina and so on and so forth. So I... I, I Really love that engine, and I'm excited to, to know that uh, you know the future AW console game is is based off that engine's ideas and stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens with that. But to, to summarize and not talk too long, No Mercy 64. <laughs> All right, you, you've you've uh, set yourself up on a, a oh, list I know. of either I know. either oh that's great or I hate this man. Oh, no, I'm, I did I'm ready. I'm ready. I've, this is not the first time I've had the debate. So <laughs> you had to, you had to expect it was going to come. And now you mentioned that AEW has so many video game projects mm-hmm. in the works. Now, how excited are you? It seems like you're connected to all this, all, all these um, projects too. So, how excited are you for the audience to see these AEW video games? So, I'm only, uh, I'm only loosely connected. Uh, I, I, so, I do work for AEW Games, but I am in charge of their their Twitch initiative. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, every week we, myself and Adam Cole, host a Twitch stream for AEW Games called All Lead Arcade at 11 a.m. on Wednesdays. Um, but uh, I obviously get to see little snippets of the game in advance. I have yet to put my hands on it. Um, and so whatever I say, do know, I've never touched it, but I'm very excited to see what comes of it. Uh, the, what I have seen of it is fantastic. Um, I do not know anything further than that. I would love to give you a scoop. I would love to tell you, oh, it's a fantastic mm-hmm. game. It plays great. Mm-hmm. I genuinely don't know. I genuinely don't know. I wish I did. Uh, but uh, AW has this thing where they keep information very close to the, the vest, be it on the video game side or be it on, you know, who... A surprise entrance is of course. Uh, they keep it very close to the vest because uh, once it leaks, once it goes out to one wrestler, it goes out to another wrestler who goes out to another wrestler. And so the video game is the same. Uh, there is a very, very small core group uh, who is allowed to see and play it. And then us, all of us tangentially get our little snippets and we get to talk about it afterwards. Uh, but I am very excited for the console game. Also very excited to see uh, what, what the... Um, the future aspect of it is like uh this is me personally but does it come out and it, it keeps growing or does it come out just once and then there's a second iteration mm. These, those are the questions i'm interested in um but we, we have been lucky enough to be able to announce for example that it's not just on consoles it will be on pc for example uh the game is titled aw fight forever um those are all little snippets that we found out recently and i'm sure we'll find out more soon um based solely on what I've read in Kenny Omega's interviews. And so hopefully <laughs> j- uh, you will see it just as I will see it soon. Um, and I, I hope it's very good because... Uh, I'm excited. Yes, I need, I need to scratch that No Mercy and Virtual Pro itch for sure. The, people, people need the information. So I think you're a liar, but I'm just going to move on. I swear. <laughs> I, I swear. <laughs> I just get it. I, I, I just get it. People might think I am because I'm called Evil Uno, but this is a genuine... This is me being genuine with you. I do not know any further information. I wish I did. I oh. wouldn't be able to disclose it, but I, I exactly tell you. like like I might <laughs> if I do know I can't tell you, but I yeah. don't know, so I can't tell you. But I can't tell you anything if I don't yeah. know anything, which I don't know, but I can't tell you. Oh, I'd okay. Tell, <laughs> yeah. I tell you, I, I do. I don't know anything. <laughs> All right, he says he doesn't know anything. Please stop messaging something. me on Twitter. <laughs> they will keep doing it at Evil oh, Uno. Sure. Keep sending it, folks. Keep sending it. Uh, but also, <laughs> let's let's get into some fantasy uh, world because if a video game character existed mm-hmm. in AEW like a Donkey Kong or a Mario, yes. who would you want to wrestle? What's your fantasy matchup against a video game character? Hmm, that's a tough one. I think uh, the first one that popped into my head is that we already have a, a established connection with Capcom where we've released Capcom shirts. Uh, Kenny Omega is huge into Street Fighter. Um, we've done collaboration shirts for, for you know, Ryu versus Kenny or, yep. or Hangman versus Ken. Uh, I'm not even sure if that those are the shirts, but um, I personally think Zangief would be fantastic in a pro wrestling ring because he is based on a old wrestler called Zangief uh, of uh, from the 80s, I believe. And so I think Street Fighter Zangief would be fantastic in a ring. Now, do I want to wrestle him? Absolutely not. Uh, I cannot potentially win that, but I think it would be very, very cool uh, if you made it to an AEW ring. Um, and who knows? I mean, 
that's the world's crazy. We could easily have a Capcom uh, characters suddenly show up. It would be odd. It would be odd. But I think if there was uh, some form of, of jump point from video games to wrestling, Street Fighter and maybe Mortal Kombat would be the two that I could see happen. I, I can't see Mario happening, for example, or Donkey Kong because he is an animal. But uh, I could see a lot of the fighting characters come over for hey, sure. I think Brian Danielson wrestled a bear once. So he did. So did Stu Hart. So there, it, that's, it, that's a good point. That's it's a good happened. Point. It's happened. So it doesn't say it can't happen again. That's now, a good point. <laughs> I, like I mentioned earlier, uh, May 29th is Double or Nothing coming mm-hmm. to pay per view at T Mobile Arena in Vegas. Um, excuse me, not Vegas, Paradise, Nevada. Now, what do fans when they go to these events what do fans expect when they go to a live event for AEW because it must be exciting i've been to two already and i mm-hmm. love it well i've been to every single one <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh it's uh i i take um i'm a fan of professional wrestling on top of being a pro wrestler i think a lot of people uh don't make that distinction anymore they they just think they're they're professionals and they're not fans anymore i i will watch every single show and if i'm not on the show I will sneak out in the crowd and take it in the way that other people take it. Because uh, that's how you want to do it. You feed off the energies of others. Uh, You're with like-minded people who are watching some of the best professional wrestling given to you in decades. Uh, And when you come to an AEW show, you are guaranteed to have standout wrestling. You don't come in, uh, you know, if you come for a dynamite taping, for example, so if you were coming to Vegas on Wednesday, uh, I, off the top of my head, I cannot remember the day. Uh, Wednesday, 25th, May 25th, um, you come for Dynamite. Well, you don't only get Dynamite, you also get Dark. So you get two hours of guaranteed jam-packed wrestling with Dynamite. And on average, or every two hours, an hour and maybe an hour and a half is pure wrestling. There is obviously some talk, but you are going to see an hour and a half of pure wrestling in there. Some of the very best. And then on top of that, you have a whole other hour of dark matches of great wrestling as well. So you get you get your money's worth. You definitely get your money's worth. You get to see every single person you want. And that gets boosted up to an even higher degree when you come to a pay-per-view. So if you do come to Double or Nothing in Vegas, or sorry, Paradise, Nevada, um, you are going to get the best that we can offer because Tony Khan does not take any pay-per-view lightly. He makes sure that you get the matches that you want to see because he wants to see them too because he is a professional wrestling fan as well. So if if I watch the pay-per-view and I'm interested in seeing those matches, you know, like Serena D versus Thunder Rosa, I think it's going to be fantastic. And of course, CM Punk versus Hangman Page is such a question mark of who could win that I want to see it. Everyone wants to see it. And you know it's going to be a great professional wrestling match because it's between two of the best professional wrestlers ever. Every single pay-per-view that AEW provides is the best that they can offer at that time. And, and that, that's, that is a promise that you can get from AEW is that if you come to see a show, you are guaranteed to see some of the best wrestling ever. And the live experience is fantastic because, you know, every, it, it, maybe, maybe this will taper off over years, but people are very, very excited coming back from the pandemic to come see some wrestling. Uh, uh, they are so excited for AEW as, in its growth. We're in a great boom for professional wrestling. So people are very excited. Uh, and so the energy levels when you come see this stuff is fantastic. It's like if you watch sports on TV, it's fine. It's great. Don't get me wrong. I like sports. I like watching hockey on TV. But being there live, you get to genuinely feel the emotions that you should feel. You know, every goal matters, much like in wrestling. Every win matters when you're there. And you know, when your favorite wins and you're there live, you know, that's a great feeling. When you're, when you're at home, it's a great feeling, but you don't, you don't have that emotional rush that you would get when a whole crowd of like-minded people feel happy for a certain person, you as well. Uh, so yes, it is a fantastic experience. If you have not gone to an AEW show, I would recommend it. Um, it's it's very good. <laughs> I've seen a lot of wrestling I, yeah. shows in my life, and it is it is a great time. They have been a, a blast. I've, again, I've gone to a few of them already, and they're mm-hmm. so much fun. Uh, one final question, though. What are your goals for the year? Uh, so I usually post the uh, goals of the year every single uh, year because I'm I'm – I used to not be very goal oriented, uh, mm. and, and I just kind of would move forward and see where, where life went. But then I, I started realizing that if I made goals, I could achieve them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was a lot easier if I, I was able to pinpoint what I wanted. And so for this year, uh, I, I've given myself a few goals, but as far as AEW related ones, um, I want to win a, t- a championship. 
Um, you know, at a, at when I made that goal, I thought the tag team championships were the most likely uh, because myself and Stu Grayson had been teaming for for 15 years at that time. Uh, but now I don't know. Now I don't know. And 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 there's a big part of me that would really love to be TNT champion um, because. Uh, that championship holds a, a very spe- a special meaning for the Dark Order. You know, it was Mr. Brody Lee's championship. Um, and it would also be proof that, uh, you know, the work that I've put in over the last 20 years would, would be worth it. You know, that's a, it's, a, it's a goal that I want for this year, but it's also a goal I want for, you know, to, to kind of not cap off because I'm not stopping, but it, it would definitely add a feather to my cap for the 20 years that I've been doing it. Um, and then other than that, I, I would love, I'd love to be on the all out pay-per-view. Um, I think those are my two big goals for right now. Um, and I think they're, they're, they're justifiably attainable. Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not aiming for anything too crazy uh, because you know, I don't want to be upset either, you know, world champion that maybe next year. Well, we'll think about it next year, but let's start with TNT champion now, but, but Hey, I'll take the opportunity if it, if, if it does come uh, this year as well. <laughs> I love it. Let's start the procedure now. Let's get Evil Uno, that TNT championship. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Evil Uno, for being here. And by the way, if you won that championship, TNT championship, it would be an honor because, again, you mentioned Mr. Brody Lee. The connection yes. there would be uh, amazing for you, amazing for the fans, for AEW, Tony Khan, everyone involved, mm-hmm. and uh, I think even Brody Lee's family. But, again, thank you so much for being here on thank NBC's you, 10 Count. It has been a blast. Time of video games. And uh, <laughs> double or nothing, you know, the dark order. I hope you guys have a great insurance policy because I heard that's that's what you guys have. And, uh, <laughs> and a dental plan because you got all those teeth. I you have a lot. A I love uh, the second set over everyone else. So, <laughs> <laughs> Again, thanks for being here, folks. I've been Steve Fall. He's been Evil Uno. We've had a great time talking. Have a wonderful day. And we'll see you next time for another edition of NBC's 10 Count. Bye. Bye.